we're ready. All right, well, today I'm going to talk about laser therapy in canines, and um, commonly it's called cold laser therapy. So to begin, uh, what it is, it is a class four laser, and you hold it on or above the skin of the animal, and it reduces the pain of that area, and it promotes healing. So in more detail, I'm going to talk about how it works. And when you hold the laser over a site, uh, your intended site, it um, transmits photons into the tissue and they are absorbed into the cells that are not functioning due to injury or illness. And the photons increase the ATP production in the mitochondria and then that will increase the cell function and it will um, allow nutrients to get absorbed and it will create new healthy cells. So kind of kick-starting cells that aren't working like they yeah. should be. Wow. Yeah, and then here in the picture. I wonder how have they discovered that, you know what I mean? Yeah. Who decided that? Um, here we got Samson. He's uh, uh, modeling. Oh, okay, that's um, Samson. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> I'll explain a little bit more, but those are called doggles. And when no. you do laser therapy on an animal, uh, you and the dog has to wear eye protection. Good old Samson. <laughs> he doesn't really like him that much. <laughs> I didn't expect the picture. Yeah. Um, so the laser will um, alleviate any chronic or acute pain in that site, and it will reduce inflammation, reduce edema, <coughs> activate immune cells, reduce bacteria, and that's like if you have a, like a site where you perform surgery, you would do the laser just like, to prevent bacteria growth. Uh, it increased blood flow to that area, and it speeds up healing and recovery. Sounds great. Yeah. So what you would use it on exactly, um, arthritis is a really common one. Um, it affects the joint fluid and kind of rebuilds cartilage in that area. Uh, you can use them on hot spots, wounds and surgical incisions, um, muscle ligament and tendon injuries, ear infections, gingivitis, hip dysplasia, and back pain. So any like type of pain or wound, um, like if a dog gets bit or something at the site, you can use this laser therapy to speed up the recovery. Uh, so the treatment, vets normally follow like, the, their golden rule is when, like each dog is different, so the dosage of the laser power will depend on what animal you're using, and in this case, dogs. So a lot of things go into play when finding that, and so normally they do 60% power, 20% wavelength, and 20% pulsing frequency. Um, so to do that treatment, well, and also it depends like, uh, fur color, the amount of fat that the dog has on the area that you're um, going to apply the laser because that will um, depend on like how fast it gets absorbed. So you might have to set up a little bit higher if your dog's overweight. Um, so for the treatments, you can do multiple treatments within the first week and then you go to <coughs> weekly or monthly treatments and then you can do maintenance. Like if the dog does have like long chronic pain, you could just do it as needed. And um, right now there are no known side effects of laser therapy. And here in the picture, uh, you see the glasses, both of them are wearing it, and that's the laser light right there that he's just like holding over the skin. Now he's not touching it, is he right there? It that's, doesn't look like it. Doesn't. it. Normally, so you how far away, I mean, did you say you could touch the You could, air? yeah. And then, or if you're moving it, how far away, half an inch or? Yeah, just kind of, there's some upper. pictures I've seen where people kind of hold it really away or close, I think it kind of depends. Okay. But um, in my mom's case, she kind of does it right above the skin. Okay. And also, when applying it, you don't really like want to hold it over a spot. You kind of go like slowly mm -hmm. in an area, about 15 minutes worth. 15, did you say? Yeah. Okay. Uh, you cannot use it on cancer, and that's because you really don't want to promote any more cell growth in the cancer area because that's wouldn't be good. Uh, you don't want to use it on the eyes, so cause blindness, uh, ovaries, testicles, and pregnant animals. You want to avoid. Um, I put this on here because I thought this was really, really interesting. So this is a case study. This dog, as you can tell, day two, it's bone, it's just pure exposed. I, it didn't say exactly what happened, but I think it got bit or something. I, it looks pretty bad. Maybe it looks like more like hit by a car. Yeah. It, it looks like that. So, or a very big animal attack. <laughs> yeah. Um, so here they are applying the laser, you can tell. And, um, mm -hmm. They kind of did it every day for 30 days, and I think it's really like a miracle worker mm -hmm. because on day 30, you see no more bone exposed, and um, normally that takes about eight weeks in order to get tissue back over a site. So 
that happened in a month compared to that. So I think it's pretty phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Were they doing other things for the wounds, like along with the laser, or just probably laser? just like medications to prevent infection? Okay. But other than that, they only used the laser over it. Um, and uh, that's that's it. So okay. So questions, comments, viewpoint to people. Yeah. So. Did you say your dog was just like modeling it, or does he actually get this therapy? He's just modeling it. Yeah. He wasn't paid though, was he? Did you give him a treat or anything? Mm -hmm. Oh, he definitely does. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Even though he's it's a paid actor. actor for it, but. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, so I've actually um, seen firsthand a veterinary working on a giraffe, actually. Mm -hmm. Um, and I thought it was really cool. As far as like, you know, when you're talking about the distance thing, there's only so close you can get when they're up there trying to keep the giraffe occupied. They were like beating, um, beating the giraffe yeah. up at the top, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, trying to still get the giraffe's uh, knee close enough to um, to the machine. And then she, she would like hold it, try and get it at the best angle. Um, and there were also different settings that she had as well. So this was like the equine setting, mm -hmm. but um, Going further into that, there was like point ones where you go to this point, this point, this point, or where you would just like scan it across. And I thought that was really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so when we had my uh, beagle spayed, they recommended uh, doing a laser on the incision. Um, but she only had got it one time, she didn't have to go back. So would that be the same thing? Yeah. Um, a lot of times, um, my mom said she did a dog that had like arthritis and obviously like wasn't cured, but like within one treatment, the dog already wasn't like limping anymore. So one treatment does do a lot. And um, she said at their clinic, like one time treatment's like $10, three times is 20, and then you can do a whole like six week treatment for like 120, but yeah. And the other thing, the thing about the incision, there's really no damaged tissue per se, mm -hmm. because you, you know, there may be a few cells. So they're doing one treatment to help blood flow. Yeah. For the healing process. Yeah. Um, so, um, my question is, if you're doing like multiple treatments, is there a point where you stop doing treatments? Or I know you said there are no long-term side effects, or no side effects, no known side effects. Um, but a laser kind of like sounds like a red flag to somebody who might not necessarily know a lot about it. Mm -hmm. So could that cause damage if you do like? two long-term treatments? Actually, no. So the laser only targets um, like unhealthy cells. So you actually can never do too much of it. It just probably won't work. It doesn't work on healthy cells, like they're already fine. So, um, I mean, like you can do, um, you can keep going, but it might reach the peak of where your dog's good, they're not doing more. So if you keep doing it, there's gonna be no health like effects on it, but but it's going to increase the cost if you keep going yeah. and it's not indicated. Now, the other thing is, you know, this is a certain class of laser. You can get a laser that will cut material and that would damage things. So this is, you know, you got to remember, there are, yeah, there are some lasers that will just cut material. So this is, you know, all controlled and maybe the kicker is that even if you went to 100% on this machine, you could never damage tissue per se unless you really are crazy. But yeah. I think that's... Yeah. Um, going off of that, I feel like because I've worked with a cold laser and a hot laser, and I feel like the only bad thing you can do is you can burn the skin if you keep the laser in one area for too long. Like in the picture, he had a hot laser, like a warm, I don't know how you classify it, but um, like if you hold it over the skin, like she was saying, for too long, then he burned the skin. So I feel like that's the only negative that I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then there are some like the cold laser where there won't be any. Mm -hmm. um, and that's where you can actually like, put it on the skin, which yeah. is kind of cool. I wonder what the difference is between a hot laser. It's, a, it's hot. Yeah, I know. Yeah, but, well, yeah, but I mean, but like, but like feel it, like feeling it, it's crazy. Like, you got, and then there's the cold laser where it doesn't even. But, how, but are they used well, right. for the I same know thing? Saying, though, you know, it's you know crazy. what I mean? Yeah, it, yeah. It's, but there's work, a whole. It'd be interesting work. to know all the classes of lasers and stuff. And yeah. uh, uh, they're used in the food industry too. I don't know if you know that, but uh, I like to go to Vegas, and my wife and I go to shows, and uh, there's a buffet that we love to go to. It's all kinds of seafood and you know how crab legs you usually have the player and you're crunching and so this one buffet it's the win actually um, all the crab legs are like cut lengthwise and you just use a fork to get the you know the meat out and I asked somebody I go 
how do you cut this so neat? I'm, fi I'm picturing a bandsaw. <laughs> no, they said a laser. So they use a laser to cut, you know, like you can imagine a crab leg, you just cut it in half and then there it is, all, there's no crunching. So amazing the uses. Anybody else questions, comments? Yeah, this is, and people at vet clinics, if they have a little ache, yeah. I mean, gonna... I'm not sure if that should be stated, but there's a little self-treatment going on too. Yeah, the, the vet tags were talking about doing it on each other. So. <laughs>